My name is William Messenger, and I'm the legal director of the National Right to Work Legal Defense Foundation. This video is intended to provide general information about the right of airline and railway employees to not be a member of a union or to pay for union political activities. For more detailed information, please review the Foundation's website or contact the Foundation to request free legal assistance. The rights of most airline or railway employees are governed by the Federal Railway Labor Act. Individuals who work in different industries will be subject to different labor laws that are discussed in other sections of the Foundation's website. This video is only intended to address the rights of airline and railway employees. Airline and railway employees have a legal right to not be a member of a union. Those employees who are union members also have the right to resign their union membership at any time. This is true even in a unionized workplace. Employees subject to a union's representation still have the freedom to choose not to be a member of a union. Union and employers cannot compel employees to be union members. The closed shop has been unlawful for decades. However, under the Federal Railway Labor Act, employees who become non-members can be compelled to pay some union fees as a condition of their employment. This is true even for employees who live and work in a right-to-work state. However, airline and railway employees cannot be compelled to pay full union dues to keep their jobs. Under the Foundation One Supreme Court decision in Ellis, the most that non-members can be required to pay to a union is a reduced union fee for union expenses germane to collective bargaining. Non-members cannot be required to pay for union political expenses, union organizing expenses, or any other union expenses not germane to collective bargaining. If an employee wants to become a non-member and exercise their rights under Ellis to pay reduced union fees, he or she can do this by sending a resignation objection letter to both the union and the employer. It is good practice for employees to send resignation objection letters by certified or registered mail and to keep a copy for their records. Sample resignation objection letters can be found on the Foundation's website. Now, whether an employee chooses to be a union member or a non-member is their personal decision. Employees who choose not to be a union member are still subject to the union's exclusive representation and to all terms of the union's collective bargaining agreement. It is unlawful for either the union or an employer to discriminate against employees who choose to be a non-member with respect to wages or their terms of employment. However, unions can reserve internal union membership benefits only to union members. If you want more information about the rights of airline and railway employees, or want to request free legal assistance with exercising those rights, you can do so on the Foundation's website or by calling 1-800-336-3600.